Hey, what's going on guys? So some of my subscribers have been recently asking me if it's possible to use a keyboard on the uh, the Fire TV Cube, which yes, the answer is yes, you can. You can actually still use the same keyboard that I previously reviewed, which is the H9 keyboard. This is actually one of my favorite keyboards that I like to use on the uh, Fire TV box and the Fire Sticks and now the Fire TV Cube. Um, I had reviewed this keyboard first, uh, but this wasn't you know very Amazon friendly compared to this one. Reason being, this one right here has the actually uh, the context menu button, which is right here. Um, and I was just playing with my other keyboard a little bit ago, which is I used for my PC, and actually it's compatible with the Fire TV Cube as well, which leads me to believe it's gonna be compatible with the Fire Sticks as well. Um, just a quick note, these will not work on the first original Fire Sticks. If your Fire Stick has a stamp of 700 on there, it's not gonna work, so don't even bother trying. In order for this to work though, as I've stated in my previous video, you will need this cable. This is an OTG cable. Pretty much it has a USB input and then it has a USB um, connection for your power. And then you have this little USB connecting right here. On the Fire Sticks, you would use this one connecting it to, the, uh, to your Fire Stick and this to your cable. But on the Fire TV Cube, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, still can you, you can still use this cable. It's going to work just fine. Uh, I'm going to show you guys just real quick. I just set this uh, Fire Cube up, uh, put some applications on here in my Kodi build. Uh, for those of you who want to, you know, start from scratch on your devices, you're more than welcome to download my build. Um, today is December 21st. My links are activated. You can download my uh, my Kodi build and all my applications. I just recently threw Terrarium back on there, and there's another application that's pretty much just like Terrarium, plus like 20 or 30 other applications that I use. You can watch your pay-per-view events using the Silk browser. The icon changed, so a lot of people always ask me, hey man, I can't find the Silk browser. It's actually the same thing, but now the icon looks um, a little bit different, but I'll show you guys that here in a little while too. Just real quick though, I wanted to show you guys the connections back. You got your USB port, which is right here. Um, it's actually micro USB is what that is. Uh, your infrared input right there, which I believe you would use this for but I don't really use it. I'm actually selling this cube, so it's not, I'm not gonna connect it. Um, you can still see I still got the wrappers on there. And then obviously your HDMI port right here and your power supply. And those are pretty much the only you know ports that you see in here, all your inputs. There's nothing else like the first generation Fire TV. You had USB ports, you had your internet built in and all that. And now they pretty much made it separate. But overall, I mean, people always ask me, what do you prefer, Amazon devices or Android boxes? I'll say Amazon devices all the way. Uh, that's just my personal preference. If you guys like Android boxes, unless you have like Nvidia Shield, then yeah, obviously you'll get the Nvidia Shield, but Amazon devices are the way to go for me personally. Um, so yeah, pretty much we're gonna go ahead and just get this thing started so I can show you guys how this is gonna work. Again, you will need the OTG cable. Um, I buy in bulk, so I buy a lot of different stuff in bulk, so this actually didn't cost me very much, but you can pick it up um, probably for about $2 or $5, depending on where you're getting it from, uh, but it's all going to do the same thing. You might even get away with buying a different kind of cable. I will leave a description for this particular one where I bought them from. Uh, like I said, Fire Stick, second generation and above, you can use this cable for the uh, connecting your H9 keyboard. Okay. The only difference is you're not going to be using one of these uh, connections. So first things first, we're gonna connect. And obviously this right here has a little transmitter, which is this one right here. I already took it out. And we're just gonna connect it. Just like that. And then we're gonna connect this one to the back of the cube. On the fire sticks, you would use the power cable that came with the fire stick to connect it to this. And that would you know give power to your device if you had a USB port on your TV. So we're just gonna go ahead and connect this on the back just real quick. And there's no settings you gotta change, you guys. Um, you just pretty much connect this and it's plug and play. Let me just get this in here if I can. Okay, so that's connected. And like I said, you have your USB connected right here. And then you're gonna have this one with nothing connected. So as soon as you have that, just like that. Let's see. We're gonna turn this guy on. Okay. Let's see here. 
Okay, guys, I pretty much just uh, rearranged my uh, my setup here so you guys can see my screen. But as you can see, it's still compatible with the uh, with the Fire Cube. Okay, so we go down here. Let me see here. These are gonna be on uh, just because I was setting up this device or whatever. As far as the Fire TV Cube, other than the Fire Sticks or whatever, and the Fire TV, it has more storage. As you can see, it's 12.48 um, gigabytes available. I have 9.43 that I'm using right now. That's after I've installed all my applications and my Kodi build, okay? Now, if you got a Fire Stick, Fire TV, a Fire Cube, doesn't matter what it is, and right here, you see megabytes, you guys are gonna be in trouble pretty soon. You need to delete any kind of cache that you have on there, the data that you have on there, um, on applications that you really don't use. So if you have a, an app that you have, you know, favorite saved on, don't delete the data on there, but clear the cache out on that. Uh, spe spe specifically on Kodi, if, you, if, if you're still using the Kodi, go ahead and, you know, clear all your cache and your data on there. There's a lot of maintenance tools that you can get. A lot of people don't like to use Kodi anymore, but I personally still do. Um, just because it's my Cody build, you know. So if you have one that's working good for you guys, um, always make sure you're watching this right here. Because what's gonna happen once this thing gets all the way fill, filled up, you're gonna be getting kicked out of your applications or whatever. It's gonna you're gonna try to turn on your device, and it's gonna say um, insufficient storage or whatever. Remove uh, remove apps, you know, to free up space. And every single time you're gonna be trying to do that, it's gonna loop you out. And it's gonna keep, keep kicking you out of your um, your devices. So always watch this right here. I will be making a video to show you guys how to clear your system up. But for now, you know, if you guys are looking at your at your device and it's pretty much full, I would highly recommend you going into your applications. And I'll show you how to do that real quick. I'm still using my keyboard, just FYI. And just go in here to like Amazon Music, and you can just clear the data. And then you can go ahead and clear the cache, and you'll start seeing. If you go back, you'll start seeing this after the restart. Usually what I do, I clear the cache and the, the data, and then I restart the device, and you'll start seeing this, you know, uh, decrease. So there's that. Um, as far as pay-per-view events, you guys, always use the Silk Browser. Um, you can watch all your sports, all your pay-per-view events for free. I do have a video that shows you guys exactly how to do that. Um, and you can actually download the ad blocker, which is this show right here. Speaking of this, let me show you guys something real quick. When you download this, um, and it's on, if you can see it right here on the bottom right hand corner, okay. On the bottom right hand corner, if this is orange, and your shield is orange right here, if you try to up, uh, open one of the apps, which is specifically gonna be Megabox, it's gonna say that there's no connection, okay? People ask me this all the time, so I'm gonna show you guys. There's no connection, right? There's no movies. Um, another thing that it does, it blocks any Amazon apps. So if, you, if you're on Amazon, you try to download like Silk Browser, you try to download Netflix or anything else that you're trying to download through um, Amazon is going to say that the app's not there. So in order to fix that, since I already have you guys' attention, you're watching this. Um, oops, that's not what I meant to do. All we're gonna do is turn this off, okay? So that's gonna get turned off. Is going to turn white. I know it's kind of hard to see in my video. Now, if we go back up to this application and hit retry, your movie's going to appear. Okay, so that's just FY. I'll get a lot of you know comments on there like, hey, why isn't this working? Uh, why can't I download any applications through um, Amazon? That's why. I usually only turn this application on is when I'm watching my pay per view events and I'm watching my sports. That will cover your NBA, your NFL. Um, Baseball when that you know that's in season UFC fights and boxing matches. Okay, there's three different websites that I use and I do have a video that shows you guys how to do that and uh, It actually has a link for you guys to download my ad blocker here So let me see what else I was gonna show you guys Yeah, so it's pretty much you know fully compatible exactly like it was with the fire sticks or whatever um, for those of you who like to use a big keyboard, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause my video and I'm going to show you guys how uh, my big keyboard works with this too. So just hold on one second. Okay guys, so pretty much what I'm going to do, got my keyboard and this is the actually USB that goes to it. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this out. I'm going to turn this one off. Okay. This is going to be my USB uh, transmitter to my full size keyboard that I use on my PC. So we're just gonna go ahead and connect this one on there. And this is gonna be a little bit harder because my keyboard's kinda big, but I'm gonna try to show you guys in a ways. So this is my keyboard, okay? Full size keyboard. 
uh, well, pretty much full size other than the numeric keypad. That's not on there. So just give me a minute. All right, guys, so this is my full-size keyboard. It's going to be a little bit harder to show you guys because it's actually a little bit bigger. But just so you guys can see, it has a home button on here, okay? So if I click the home button, it will bring home. If I hold it down, just like a fire stick, okay? Click on your apps, and I'm going to show you guys, you know, with your arrows right here, you can kind of maneuver what you want to, you know, get into. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to the Internet Browser. I actually like using this. It's kind of you know bigger than you know the other ones. So the thing that I didn't like about the other mini keyboard that I had that I did like about this one is that it did have this context menu button right here. So you would click this button on the Amazon Fire Stick remote or on this keyboard to bring up your bookmarks within the Amazon Silk browser. So on this keyboard, you actually have the same thing. We're just gonna go ahead and push this button and it brings up your bookmarks. If you wanna go back home, same thing. Click your home button, just like a Fire Stick remote. If you want to hold it down, bring up your apps, and then click enter, and bring up your apps, just like that. We're going to go ahead and go into one of the applications, because your mouse works on here too. So once we get in there, you can actually still use, you know, if, so you guys can see right there, and I go ahead and click on that, just like you would on a mini keyboard. And then go back home. And that's pretty much it for that. And just like I mentioned in my previous videos too, man, uh, if you have a little wireless keyboard, like the little mini ones, or a full size keyboard, you can always still use your regular remote too. So I still have both of them connected on there. Well, I have one keyboard and then I got this one right here. Um, it's not Bluetooth. So if you guys wanna buy a Bluetooth one, you can. It's gonna be a little bit more pricier, but I mean, I can't remember how much I paid for this one, but it was under 20 bucks for sure. Um, and then that's including with the cable. Like I said, I buy my cables um, in bulk, so it was actually a little bit cheaper. But that's pretty much it, man. Um, if you guys have any kind of issues, any kind of questions, um, you wanna learn how to do something, feel free to leave a message, man. Um, I will be putting my Snapchat on here and my Instagram. If you guys wanna contact me, feel free to add me. I'm constantly responding to people on there. Um, I actually respond to people faster on those apps than I do on the actual YouTube just because I have so many notifications on my YouTube that it's kind of hard to keep up with everybody. So I try to answer everybody you know, as fast as I can, but um, if you want my Snapchat or my Instagram, feel free to add me, man, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get back to you guys ASAP. Um, I will be doing some giveaways. I stocked up on some of these Fire TV cues, man, so here pretty soon I'll be doing some giveaways um, just for, you know, uh, for my subscribers that have been subscribing to me or whatever on there. I appreciate you guys subscribing. Um, hit the bell to make sure you get, you, you get notified when I upload a new video. Like I said, my build is available for download at the moment. Let me uh, show you guys what it looks like real quick. If you guys want to mess with that noise. You really don't need code anymore, but it's easier for the newcomers that are just now getting used to you know uh, streaming stuff because I kind of break down everything into categories and I did tie in all my APK files like Terrarium and all that kind of stuff on there as well. So I'm going to pause this video for a minute, let my stuff load up. And I'll show you guys here in a second. All right, guys. So pretty much everything's loaded up, man. So like I said, all my APK files are right here. Um, they're also on the bottom right here as well. If you go through here, you got your Kodi add-ons or whatever. I try to maintain this as much as I can. My live TV apps right here. Um, Kodi maintenance. As soon as you start Kodi, it's going to automatically start you know, cleaning it for you. So you don't got to really mess with it too much. Depending on what kind of device you have, now that I'm seeing this, let's say you do this on a, you download my build on a Fire Stick or a Fire TV or a Fire TV Cube. Very important, you guys. Click right here where it says um, Advanced Buffer Settings, and then go use Optimal. Okay, pretty simple. After that, just restart your device and you're good to go. Um, the video that I had that shows you guys how to download my build and all my APK files. It shows you how to do that as well, I believe. So if you guys have any issues, like I said, feel free to hit me up, message me, and um, that's it, man. Thank you very much for watching, as always. And I appreciate any kind of feedback, negative or positive. It doesn't really matter. I look at everything. I laugh, you know, when people complain about certain things that are trying to watch for free. You gotta, you guys have to remember, people like myself, we do this for free. We're not getting paid for it, or at least I'm not getting paid for it. I don't really care for donations or anything like that. But I do this to help you guys out. I know what I'm doing. So if you guys you know, need help with anything, feel free to hit me up, man. That's it.